get into it. Sold Not For Sale podcast, Coach Colin here. Interesting development in the censorship of the JRE. Ben Shapiro uncovered the story and it wasn't going to stay covered for too long. Ben Shapiro actually had to testify in front of Congress and it was almost a combating of this organization called GARM and what they do in regards to advertising and how they've been able to kind of convince or pressure certain platforms to censor certain people and apparently they've taken aim at a lot of conservative voices and joe rogan happens to fall under that as well as donald trump as well as fox news as well as breitbart news but we're going to focus in on joe rogan i'm going to play a clip of him talking with annie jacobson where they just talk about censorship as a whole the internet and you know independent media things of that nature then i'm going to move on to ben actually testifying in front of congress then i'm going to show you the written breakdown that he gives and emails that he shows where they are discussing joe rogan's podcast trying to pressure spotify to censor joe rogan and after seeing this it kind of makes me think why did he go back to youtube maybe views were lower on spotify i'm not sure but if this is what's been happening, may maybe he just didn't know about all this, but it was known in Spotify. So I would hope somebody would have told him. Anyways, let's get into the first clip and then we'll move on. Visited it. I'm thinking back to the earlier part of this conversation with our hunter gatherer ancestors with the, the, you know, the argument is, was the spear and the arrowhead, was that, was that was that design did that come out of man's imagination for warfare or to make it easier to kill the wildebeest or the woolly mammoth it was both i think it was both both so the so the analogy you know where will the ai go with that because you're talking about all these very healthy right. ideas and solutions but mm -hmm. just because of what I write about and who I speak to, I cannot help but see the powerful defense industry taking the pole position and making it secret in terms of which direction AI is really going to accelerate. It's going to be a dangerous bridge that we have to cross, but I equate that with the internet. Right? The internet was initially set up so that universities and the military and the, the they can communicate with each other arpanet mm -hmm. right but what did it become after that well once it got into the hands of the people then it became this bizarre force of information and changing culture and a lot of negatives and not a positive it's, it's clearly being manipulated by certain states it's it's mm -hmm. definitely like they're doing it to ramp up dissent and make people angry at each other and propagate misinformation but he, but it's so it's such a force of change, and I don't think they anticipated it. And I don't I think once that genie got out of the bottle, I mean, if they could go back and stop the internet from being available to people, oh my God, would they do that? It'd go back in time you in a moment, a hundred percent. Yeah. Wow. You especially think the people in control. Yeah. Why would corporations? Why would people would rather have military? you watching, listening to the radio, yes, and watching? You get your ABC fucking TV. news from CNN. God wow. damn it, and that's it. Yeah, I don't think they would ever want this to happen. I mean, they just signed, uh, there was a new Supreme Supreme Court ruling. Um, what was it? Was it Wyoming? No, Missouri? What was the state that they just passed a ruling where they were saying that the government is allowed to pressure social media companies into removing content that they don't want on there? Well, this was the whole point of the Twitter files, right? The FBI right. was trying to block the Hunter Biden laptop story, saying that it was Russian disinformation, which it turned out to not be at all, and they knew it. And so they got all these intelligence officials to sign off on this thing. And they lied. And, and, and they, it's essentially a form of election interference. This is it. Okay. The Supreme Court on Wednesday said the White House and federal agencies such as the FBI may continue to urge social media platforms to take down content the government views as misinformation, handing the Biden administration a technical, if important, election year victory. That's not a victory. That's, that's, a, that's bad for people because they've already shown that what they're silencing was real. They've shown that just within recent years... What they were trying to get removed from social media turned out to be accurate information. 
And but so now, on some level, doesn't that empower people because they they see those victories and they become more curious and they become more thoughtful in their in their way in which they're going to examine information that gets presented to them in the future. Perhaps, Just to be the devil's but they're advocate. not going to get access to that information yeah. now because of that. They're getting that information from social media, and it's going to get removed from social media. Like you know the yeah. the implica- You know what happened with the the Hunter Biden laptop story? They completely eliminated your ability to have it on Twitter. Mm-hmm. You couldn't share it in a DM. You couldn't you couldn't post it. It would get immediately taken down. That was the New York Post. Right. It's the second oldest newspaper in the country. It's a very long established newspaper and they blocked that. And so that's the FBI, right? right? That's that's the same people that they said, You guys are so good at this, we're gonna let you keep doing it. You know, we're gonna rule that you're you're still allowed to do that. Take down misinformation. I think my point is that the pushback is sometimes as powerful as the attempt to censor. Yes. Meaning, in other words, like if you look at China and you look at what Mao did with, you know, all like just completely obliterating access to information. And in a communist environment, nothing's changed and that's tragic for everyone living there. Mm-hmm. But even if I think of the Hunter Biden story, my own self, who was maybe busy with something, I can't remember what, and didn't get involved in that then, I read about it now. And learn from it and say, wow, that's really interesting that that happened. So I think that I maybe I believe I'm too much of an optimist in that regard that I think when things come to light, they become they become powerful when you shine the light on it. So it doesn't necessarily – and I also maybe am more of a pra- pragmatist know that – the government is always up to something. The you yeah. know this this side. It's why I don't write about politics. I I always take essentially with a grain of salt what one side is saying about the other side that consider themselves adversaries. Right. Because they're just going to be completely biased. It's why I like having discussions with so many different kinds of people on all different kinds of the aisle. What a what a brain invigorator. Yeah. To be able to sit with someone that I might not agree with, I might not like who they vote for, but their ideas are interesting. Right. Even if nothing other than that we all were chimps once upon a time. Yeah. No, it's all interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm more, I, I believe what you're saying is correct about shining the light on things that, that come to light. The problem is this is like a direct attempt to stop the light. And the, the scary thing is social media is generally the way people find out about information that's not being released in the mainstream. What is this, Jamie? So this, <clears throat> there was a, I think I'm reading this uh, SCOTUS blog, which is the, the Supreme Court blog talking about this. Um, they reversed a decision so it could go back for more proceedings. It says there, like one of the judges said there was like a lack of evidence or lack of con- concrete link. So they're, they're asking just for more proof, which they also said that's a tall order for the proof. They need to have a substantial risk. Proof for what? Right here. And a substantial risk that. In the near future, at least one platform will restrict the speech of at least one plaintiff in response to the actions of at least one government defendant. That's according to, that's what this is about, I guess. Here she stressed, that's a tall order. The plaintiff's main argument for standing, Barrett observed, is that the government officials were responsible for restrictions placed on them by social media platforms in the past, and that the platforms will continue under pressure from the government officials to censor their speech in the future. Yeah, that's a problem. Look... I think Elon's take on social media is the correct take. you got to let everybody talk. Yes, but you could also let everybody talk around the dinner table. Yeah, but they're not going to do that. But But they should. Right, but they're not going to. But there's no way to share information worldwide around the dinner table, right? These things are very important. They need to be addressed in, in mass. And they need to be found out in mass. Like People need to find out about it. And then they need to be outraged. They need to put pressure on the politicians. That's the whole reason yeah. why they're trying to censor them. They're not trying to censor them because they're worried about misinformation. Right. If it's misinformation, you say it's misinformation, then everybody realizes, right. oh, that's bullshit. And some people believe it, but that's always going to be the case. What they're trying to do is control the narrative. Yes. That's what they've yes. always been able to do. They've shown, they've demonstrated by the Hunter ba- Biden laptop thing through the Twitter files, they've shown they can't be trusted. We can't yeah. trust what you say is in misinformation if you just lied three years ago. Right. You're lying. 
You lied. Okay. <laughs> are those people still working there? The people that lied? Mm-hmm. They are. Are they still in positions? Of, yeah, they are. Okay. What are we talking about then? If you don't clean house, how are we going to like give you the power to censor what you say is misinformation? You have to be really sure it's misinformation. And you should tell us how you know it's misinformation. And you should allow people to examine that information and come to the same or different conclusions and debate those people. Let's find out what's real. That's not what they want to do. They want, it's an appeal to authority. They want one group to be able to dictate what the truth is. And that group is entirely motivated by money and power. That's not good. That's not good for anybody. The thing that I'm hopeful about with AI is AI won't be motivated by those things if it becomes sentient. If we, and I don't think we're going to be able to stop that from happening, Mm. if we do create something that is essentially a digital life form, and this digital life form doesn't have any of the problems that we have in terms of illogical behavior, emotions, desire to accumulate resources, greed, egotism, all the different things, narcissism, all the different things that are like really a problem with leaders. You know what he's getting to. Hey, if we all just put a chip in our brain, we'll all be okay because the AI will be fine and it'll govern us and it'll work us like sock puppets. It'll be fantastic. Anyway, (laughs) I'm focusing more on the part where they were talking about the censorship. And it was really funny what this woman said, Annie. She said, you know, but you could talk at the dinner table. (laughs) How on earth would I be able to talk with my family about what happened in Brazil when they were trying to silence X? trying to to silence journalists and trying to get x to go along with it secretly how would i know about that to talk about that with my family if not for all social media has become and then another thing that joe touched on and this is kind of like you know a bit to the counter of that when joe says you think that they wanted the internet he's like no they would have preferred for it not to be around i think that's wrong because here's the thing when it comes to you know, mainstream media. Yeah, that would have been the only thing to get your information from. But what would have happened is, because I know this happened with me. There was no social media when I decided to disconnect from mainstream media. I just decided to go outside. I decided I'm not watching TV anymore. And I'd watch DVDs of anything and I just wouldn't watch TV. And that was it. That's just what I decided. You know? So there would have been mass people, mass populations of people just deciding, I don't want to watch the news. I don't need to know what's going on. I don't need to know which one of my neighbors is the enemy because I just go and talk to my neighbors and they all seem cool. And I don't need to know about what liberals think and what Republicans think because I can just go and talk to I'm just I'm talking to one right now. He's liberal. He's pretty cool. But when we all have these phones in our pockets, it's a little different. You could connect with your neighbor and then all of a sudden you look at your phone and you're like, oh, you're one of the all of a sudden you get this you get this feed of who somebody is without actually having to interact with them, which gave them. It went out of control a little bit in regards to the narrative, but they also have a massive. Much stronger control of spreading their narrative than they did without it. So, yeah, there's some people like you and I and we go away from the narrative because we can go see X and we can have these channels and this and that. But there are a lot of people who are just like MSNBC on my phone. Of course, CNN, I got the app. There's a lot of people like that. So to say that you don't think that the powers that be would want this, I don't think so, because if they really didn't want it, it wouldn't have happened. That that's just my way of thinking about it. Also, just uh, I guess I'll get into this after. I'm going to talk about if Joe was compromised because there's a lot of people who are always like Joe's compromised. But with all that I'm going to show you right now, how is that so? I don't understand how that could be so. We're going to start it off with Ben Shapiro testifying. This is just a couple of minutes. This is just what he is saying. Can't have Ben on double speed. Normal speed Ben will do. That's fast enough. Let's start here. Chairman Jordan, Ranking Member Nadler, members of the committee, good morning. First of all, Ranking Member Nadler, I appreciate the kind words about our business. 
It's very kind of you. And also, I assume that we'd be doing a lot better without the institutional obstacles that I'm about to discuss. We're in the midst of a trust crisis in the world of media, which is because so many in the legacy media have lied in order to preserve left-leaning narratives. To take just the most recent example, we were told by the legacy media that President Biden was just fine. For years, anyone who questioned his health and mental fitness was trafficking in cheap fakes. And then President Biden went out and engaged in a full-scale mental collapse on stage in front of hundreds of millions of people. So we can see why Americans, at least Americans who are not Democrats, do not trust the media. The question isn't really why the legacy media have lost Americans' trust. We know that answer. The question is why, despite that loss of trust, the legacy media continue to gain share in the advertising market. And the answer is simple. There is, in fact, an informal pressure system created by Democratic legislators, this White House, legacy media, advertisers, and pseudo-objective brand safety organizations. That system guarantees that advertising dollars flow only to left-wing media brands. Let me explain how this works. When a conservative competitor to the legacy media arises, members of that legacy media and their political allies rush to paint such competitors as dangerous. The commentator Kara Swisher of the New York Times, for example, told the head of YouTube that my videos at Daily Wire were a, quote, gateway drug that would lead children, including her own teenage son, to watch neo-Nazi content. Never mind the yarmulke. Elected Democrats pick up that same messaging. In 2017, Senator Dianne Feinstein told lawyers at Facebook, Google, and Twitter, quote, you created these platforms and now they're being misused and you have to be the ones to do something about it or we will. Social media companies react to incentive structures, including threats. They have responded by adopting the standards of third-party left-wing informational safety groups like the Global Alliance for Responsible Media or GARM. GARM purportedly sets brand safety standards, objective standards by which advertisers and platforms can supposedly determine just what sort of content ought to be deemed safe for advertising. In reality, GARM acts as a cartel. Its members account for 90% of ad spending in the United States, almost a trillion dollars. In other words, if you're not getting ad dollars from GARM members, it's nearly impossible to run an ad-based business. And if you're not following their preferred political narratives, the ones that Kara Swisher and Dianne Feinstein would follow, you will not be deemed brand safe. Your business will be throttled. We at Daily Wire have experienced this firsthand. In 2017, after Senator Feinstein made her threats to bring the weight of government down on social media platforms, Daily Wire YouTube channel saw a 1,000% increase in content enforcements over a two-year period. Since 2021, after Democrat officials further turned up the heat on social media companies, my personal Facebook page has seen an over 80% drop in impressions. Or take Joe Rogan. When Joe said that he had taken ivermectin after getting COVID, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki pressured Spotify to take action, stating, quote, we want every platform to be doing more to call out missing disinformation while also uplifting accurate information. Spotify complied. Spotify, of course, works with GARM. So what are the brand safety standards that GARM uses? The standards begin with inarguable things that we've heard from the other witnesses, like preventing distribution of child sexual abuse material or stopping terrorism. But GARM doesn't draw the line at what is criminal, abusive, or dangerous. Their standards also include restrictions on hate speech, harassment, misinformation, or my personal favorite, insensitive, irresponsible, and harmful treatment of debated, sensitive social issues. Very interesting. I did not know that this entity existed. I've never heard of it before. Yeah, I was just looking into it. Just a quick little search. What is GARM? Has multiple meanings, but the meaning that we're looking at right now is the Global Alliance for Responsible Media. It is a cross industry initiative founded by the World Federation of Advertisers in 2019. Its primary goal is to improve the safety and stability or sustainability, sorry, of digital advertising, reduce harmful content online, and promote integrity and accountability in digital media ecosystem, in the digital media ecosystem. Another meaning that it has, though, I found this pretty interesting. Norse mythology, <laughs> Garm is a large dog or wolf that guards hell, <laughs> the land of the dead. <laughs> I found that very interesting just because it's about media and it's advertising, the, the you know, the land of the dead, guarding hell, guarding media, media's hell. Anyway, I, th I thought it was funny, okay? I'm getting into my dad joke era. Now that I have a kid, the dad jokes are coming out. Anyways, let's jump over to what Ben actually did. Ben reported on this right away. So right away, he was just like breaking uh, Jim Jordan finds a Daily Wire, Donald Trump, Joe Rogan, Elon Musk, Fox News, Breitbart News and more are targeted by a cartel of advertisers controlling 90 percent of the ad dollars to demonetize and reduce their reach. We have the receipts. Now, again, if you're on X, you can jump over here and see 
what Ben Shapiro was talking about. He made a whole thread. But what we're going to be focusing on is the Joe Rogan parts, because this is a Joe Rogan channel. That's what this turned into. I never intended for it to be a Joe Rogan channel. <laughs> Although his face is right here. I didn't intend for it. Now, uh, Garm also worked to pressure Spotify over Joe Rogan's podcast, specifically over the claims that young, healthy people don't need a you-know-what, uh, I'm not sure how to say that name, Rakowitz, admitted in private emails that threats like the one made to Spotify get us in hot water by the way of anti-competitive and collusive behaviors. Now, there's a bunch of emails that Ben also had access to. I'm not sure how he got access to those. I'm gonna pull those up over here. This is one of the first emails. This is to Rob. Let you guys see the laptop finally. This is to Rob, okay? And this is from someone named Joe uh, Barone, who's a part of the N group, or sorry, group M, my apologies. And the forward, it's right there, playing his day. This is about, let me click on here. So, oh, oh, hold on. Make sure I get this email. Pull it up. There it is, bang. Okay. So right there, you can see it. It's about Joe Rogan, right in the subject there. You see right there, it's about Joe Rogan. So now this is a link to a article that is about Neil Young demands Spotify move his music over Joe Rogan's comments. It says, hi, can we discuss at the next steer team? Uh, I guess that's meeting, short form for meeting. Spotify, Spotify community guidelines are spotty at best. Okay, interesting, very interesting. So right away, they're like, Spotify is not doing their job. Check out this guy's email. So Joe Barone, managing partner, brand partner. Look at it, at the bottom, he just, <laughs> it's Black Lives Matter. Like, geez, relax, bro. But you can see uh, what kind of people these emails are coming from. So here's another email at the top there. It says, Modern Media Solutions. Again, this is from Rob Rakowitz gentleman who is uh, a part of the garm uh, i don't know even what to call it the association organization so right away he responds he says throttled this is in regards to joe rogan so right away they just decided they took a look at what was going on throttled them so we all thought when neil young made that little demand we all thought that's so ridiculous and what's neil young gonna do and blah 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 because we're all watchers of the show but apparently they actually took action because of that now, this is from Rob. This is to blank, 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 blank. So it's not telling us anybody, but it's Garm slash Spotify uh, 2022 kickoff and audio sync materials. Hi, I'm sorry, but this isn't working. We are gravely concerned about the lack of fundamental policies and decision making at your platform. They're referring to Spotify. This is a statement backed by the steer team. Not sure what that is which you will recall functions as a board of directors and brings together PNG, Unilever, Mars, Diego, not sure what that is, 4As, Group M, ISBA, and Anna. I am disappointed by the lack of seriousness this meeting is being handled with. We've heard back, uh, oh, we've uh, held back on press commentary on this incident out of deference so they're like holding back they're like okay we were, we were gonna go to the press but we're not going to but you guys gotta get serious this is very interesting got another email again this is to joe barone this is from uh mr rakowitz and again i'm about to throttle this guy so again this is talking about joe rogan joe rogan podcast and then lower this is uh i guess from barone Actually, it's, I shouldn't even say that. It's from blank, so I do not know who it's from. It's to Rob. That's one person they're willing to show. The rest of the people that are with Spotify, they are not willing to show. It says, thanks, Rob. Since we have our trust and safety team joining, we are hoping to keep this meeting between Spotify and Garm to talk through all of the questions and dive a little deeper. However, we are happy to set up a separate call with the steering committee following this one. We will most likely have a few additional Spotifiers attend the one with the committee 
I am out of the office tomorrow and Friday. So looping in blank. I really wonder who these people are that they're mentioning that they refuse to actually show. Like, why are these people redacted and Rob's not? I guess because Rob maybe had to testify. I didn't get to watch the whole thing. It's about four hours. So this last one is from Joe Barone to blank, blank, blank. One name that they do show is John Montgomery. Um, and other than that, everybody's blanked out. The subject matter says Joe Rogan. This afternoon, we addressed the JRE misinformation issue with Spotify. Their position was laid out by big old blank there. Acknowledged that they reviewed the podcast in question and approved its airing. This was not a case of misinformation slipping through the cracks. They acknowledged they are in a learning and development mode and are in the process of updating their content policies. Maybe this is why Joe actually brought it back to YouTube because he's just like, why not just have both? If I just leave it in the hands of this, maybe this is going on. Maybe somebody did notify him. I'm not sure because I don't know if they'd have to notify him about these emails. They could just say we have to talk about things, but they don't never have to say who's putting the pressure, right? We noted that Group M does not buy Joe Rogan, and therefore we had no client exposure. However, we pointed out the fact that our clients are as concerned with human safety and supporting platforms that enable harmful content. Wow. So they're really pushing, they're really putting the pressure to get rid of Joe Rogan. They're kind of reminding them, hey, this is not... Um, something that you guys buy. He's not one of the people that you guys put advertising on. So your client, your clients, all of the clients that I mentioned before, Unilever, PNG, et cetera, they didn't get exposed to being alongside any Joe Rogan content. And we confirm with Spotify that Group M brand safety team lead will conduct and complete trust and safety review of the Spotify platform and policies. We will begin the process immediately. This is very, very concerning. So this is what they were trying to do with Joe Rogan. Now, I looked in to see if CNN worked alongside Garm at all, and it came up with nothing. If I dig a little deeper, maybe I'm not 100% sure. I might just have to look into the individual companies. Not 100% sure. Let me just check something right now. Does Black own Garm? Let me just see something real quick. Okay. I'm not seeing anything there. Let's give AI a try does black okay so there's no evidence showing that said company owns any part of garm okay so there's there's no indication there just wanted to check because they own everything right so this is very concerning this is what they've been trying to do to joe rogan for years so just think about this they've probably been doing this since 2020 all the way up until I would assume now these emails that you just saw were from 2022. So this has been a long time going when it comes to Joe Rogan's content and this company, Oh, I said, I put Garmin. No, 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 not Garmin, Garm. So Joe Rogan has been, no, they don't own it. Okay. Joe Rogan has been getting attacked or suppressed, attempted to be suppressed by this company for a long time. Now, this company still does do business with Spotify. So even though, like I read in that email, there was no client exposure, like it said in the email, they could still say, well, listen, your platform is still housing this person who's saying these very harmful things, a lot of misinformation, and that might affect how we feel about doing business with you at all. Maybe that's why we've seen here and there, as soon as Joe Rogan jumped on with Spotify, we've seen all sorts of episodes get deleted. The Chris D'Elia episode got deleted. I'm not 100% sure about Jones, but there's been a bunch of episodes that have been deleted, completely gone. And I don't even see them on YouTube anymore either. So they've just been ghosted, just gone. Um, maybe this is why. And in fact, I would say 100% this is why. Anything that runs the lines of harmful misinformation, all the things that Ben also stated, 
I don't know. Very, very interesting. But they have been doing this. Donald Trump, Ben Shapiro, Daily Wire, Fox News even. To think that Fox News, you think of Fox News like you think of CNN. In fact, Fox News is doing way better than CNN, although both of them took massive hits in their ratings. But to see that even they're able to be affected, it only makes me think more and more about, you know, yeah, you know, you know what I mean? A lot of people are probably affected by this. Um, I will just say, when Joe was talking about the laptop story, I do have my own. I remember being on a certain platform. I can't remember which one, but I mentioned the laptop and something happened. They addressed it right away and tried to take the video down. And I was like, from whatever platform, I can't remember which one. And they tried to take it down and I was like, I didn't say anything bad. They said I said something derogatory. I watched the episode. I'm like, I didn't say anything derogatory. The only thing I brought up was the laptop. And I was like, oh. And then I wrote to them. I said, there's nothing derogatory. What you're saying is not true. And then they backed off. But then I realized as I was going through this whole process, the only thing I brought up that could be anything was the laptop. There was no swearing. There was nothing. So, <sighs> Yeah, there's a lot of these companies putting pressure. <laughs> and I've always wondered this. I've always wondered, is it just the right side that gets this? Or does the left get it as well? Because I've seen some titles from very left-leaning people who do what I do. And I'm like, huh, if I made that title and just took out, you know, because they're doing like derogatory things about Trump and put in AOC or Nancy Pelosi, I know I would get dinged. I'm like, I wonder if they get dinged for saying that about Trump. And uh, it's starting to look like they don't. <laughs> and you know what? I'll just end this with saying, so when you see somebody, and I know I'm probably preaching to the choir, but when you see someone like Candace Owens or Officer Tatum or, or someone like me, and you think so, so many people will say, oh, you're just doing this for money. I've heard that so many times. Oh, you're just do you're you're just gravitating towards the right because because that's where the money's at when these white people see you do things like this. And I'm like, do you this confirms it? You know how much more money there is, how much less scrutiny there is if I just decided to just be severely left leaning and I just embrace that fully? Are you kidding me? I'd be I'd be on TV by now. Are you joking right now? I'd be a CNN correspondent by now. Oh my gosh, Candace Owens, Candace Owens would be, she would be worth a quarter billion dollars by now if she decided to go ahead and do that. Are you joking? I'm just saying, that was just my little personal beef. But anyways, that's what's happening with Joe Rogan right now. I can't wait to see if he actually addresses it because he's for sure been notified about this by Ben Shapiro and probably many other people. Anyways, guys, just wanted to give you that little update. Censorship galore. <laughs> Garm is a new thing I just learned about. Like and subscribe. Turn on the notifications. Other than that, I'm out.